Hello! Welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be making an Alice in Wonderland dress. I made a video making an Alice in Wonderland apron. Here is said apron. Now, of course, I have a blue skirt and a blue shirt that can work to sort of look like an Alice costume slash look with this apron, but I just... An Alice dress would be so lovely. Plus, as we're approaching summer, it's really nice to have lots of dresses available with short sleeves, which Alice's dress is. And of course, you probably know that I just hecking love Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is also one of the biggest reasons why I have a pink and blue themed, I was gonna say wardrobe, but honestly, life. So if you want to see how I made this dress, then keep watching. I guess it's not necessarily how, because it's not a tutorial, because I'm going to be figuring out how I'm going to do it as I go, but if it turns out good, then, like, I guess you can follow what I do. So let's get into the project. So I am looking at some pictures of Disney's 1951 Alice in Wonderland animation to look at what her dress looked like. It has a very... 1950s inspired silhouette, but that silhouette was also very common among small children in the 1860s, which is when Alice in Wonderland was written. But in Wonderland, one of the talking flowers, I talked about this in my Alice in Wonderland apron video, one of the flowers looks very late Victorian, early Edwardian sort of inspired look. So I actually think that part of the charm of Alice in Wonderland is that it's not really specific to any one date. Though it technically takes place in the 1860s, because that's when it was written, it kind of doesn't matter when Alice in Wonderland takes place. In the animation, it kind of is just really whimsical and mysterious that the time is kind of nondescript. So even though I based my apron off of the Edwardian era because of the iris, I am going to sort of make this dress represent all of the different areas that are shown in the Alice in Wonderland animation. So I'm going to kind of mix together the 1950s and the Edwardian era and the 1860s. So here is what I've come up with for the dress design. I'm going to go with quite a simple bodice with just some darts right here and maybe a couple in the back. And I'm gonna go with a sort of circle skirt situation and I'm gonna try and make it with five panels. Then even though Alice's dress in the movie is puffed, I actually, for some reason, I kinda wanna do straight sleeves with a little cuff on the bottom and I'd like to put these little bows on the outside of the sleeves. I don't really know where that idea came from, but I just, it's what I want to do. <laughs> then I'm going to go with a Peter Pan collar, which is featured on the animated version. So the design is pretty simple. This dress will mostly be about getting the fit right and getting the silhouette right, because that's mostly what really gives it its fabulous look. Now, as far as the actual materials, I have this sheet that I got from the thrift store. It is a beautiful Alice blue, and I think this sheet is maybe queen sized I'm not exactly sure. It seems pretty, like a pretty nice hefty bit to me. For the closure in the back of the dress, I think I'm just gonna go straight down the back with buttons and then do hook and eyes for the closing of the skirt part so that it just goes a little more seamlessly. So I'm just gonna get into drafting a pattern for this, which is always a little bit scary and can be very time consuming. So. Let's get into it. Now you can see the color of the fabric much better, and I think that this is a beautiful color. This is 35% cotton. Okay, that's not too bad. I do prefer 100% cotton when I can get it, but it is what it is. So when I am coming up with patterns, I tend to do it straight onto the fabric, which I know is not technically the greatest practice, because if you want to change the pattern, it's just, you're not supposed to, so maybe don't do as I do, but I don't know, it works quite well for me. I would explain to you exactly how I'm doing this, but honestly, it's really hard to explain how to draft a pattern. I kind of just measure spots on myself and then draw it onto the fabric. I also am not really one to follow grains or anything. Um, I know that you're like, 
Once again, you're kind of supposed to, but I've never really had problems with that. And that is totally how I jinx myself, is saying it's never been a problem before and watch it become a problem. This process is very, very long and kind of difficult, so if you're not comfortable drafting your own pattern, I'd recommend finding one and possibly altering it. So I realize you basically can't see anything I'm doing anyways, so I'm just gonna like finish this and then I'll show you the pieces once I have them. I have finished cutting out the pieces that took probably, honestly I don't even know, time kind of just like stops moving normally when I'm drafting a pattern because honestly it takes forever, it was probably a couple hours. I have not actually cut out pieces for the pockets yet because that's more something that I do once more of the dress is finished. I don't know, it's just it's the way I roll. Here are the many pieces that I have. There's actually a lot of fabric left after I cut out the pieces, which I'm honestly quite shocked about because there's like enough to make like a whole another circle skirt, which is cool. But here is the bodice piece. I have not sewn that yet, but it was, I pinned it so that I could see how it was going to fit. Then I have five skirt panel pieces and the sleeves. Here is one of the sleeve pieces. So it will go like that, kind of-ish. It'll look nicer when it's actually sewn together, hopefully. So yeah, I am pretty much just gonna start sewing pretty quick here. I'm gonna start with sewing the darts on the bodice and sewing the sleeves on. I have this vintage thread that is like the perfect color, but I need to test first if it's strong enough because some vintage thread can get pretty weak, so. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a little too weak. That snaps pretty easily, so. I am just going to stick with a white thread I have my beautiful 1906 sewing machine over here. This is a hand crank sewing machine. So um, when I got this, I had to get used to sewing with one hand. I'll just have to thread this with a different color and then I will get sewing. When the sewing machine came out in the Victorian era, it was actually complained about because people said that it sewed too slowly. The hand crank on the side here, every rotation does three stitches, which is pretty slow. It does give you a nice arm workout though, which is kind of nice, except that it's only one arm, so... After that fun fact, I got sewing and stitched together the darts on the front and on the sides, and I sewed together the shoulder seam where the sleeves are going to go later. I was just trying on the bodice and the darts are a little bit weird so I'm going to take them out and do them again. So I am just cutting the stitches and then once I am happy with the fit of those I will start adding a little bit of bit of a cuff situation around the opening in the back because it's a little bit too small. Okay, so I redid the darts, or just two of the darts because there's four, but I'm gonna try this on. That's not bad. I mean, it's doing a bit of weirdness right here that I might want to do a little, a little bit more of a slope the shoulder is right there. Other than that, it's pretty good. The darts look good now. Um, and you can see at the back, it doesn't like go to get, I mean like it just meets, but there's not enough for me to like hem it and finish the closure back there. So I'm gonna add some more strips of fabric in the back. I think I maybe want to lower this neckline a little more because it's like kind of pressing into my neck a little bit awkwardly. I think this, is a pretty good place to be. I'm just gonna do a little bit of finagling here and cut the neckline a little more. Okay, that feels better. And the neckline, you can just see my collarbone now, and that 
is just about perfect in my opinion. The shoulders aren't doing as much of that weird wrinkly thing as before. I think tonight I might just sew on extra strips of fabric for the back, but then I think I'll just pick this up tomorrow. Hello, it is the next day and I am just about to get started sewing the sleeves. If you've sewn a garment before, you probably know that sleeves are evil. They're basically the worst thing to sew because something always goes wrong. I don't know what it is about sleeves. Something always goes wrong. The seam is in the wrong place and the two sleeves look different. It's just I'm gonna try not to screw it up. We're gonna hope for the best. So yeah, basically I'm just gonna like fold it in half like that and sew along the bottom. Then we'll try and sew this onto the shoulder. See how it goes. As I work on this, I will be watching a Brad Mondo video because, let's be real, when am I not watching a Brad Mondo video? So I have pinned the sleeves with a whole crap ton of pins because once again, sleeves are very weird and I'm, I'm not risking it so I'm just pinning absolutely everything. Okay, so here is the first sleeve. It actually looks quite decent. I'm very glad that I did a lot of pins because they came in very helpful. I did a tiny little pleat right at the top because it's way easier to make the sleeve be just like slightly too big than you know it's gonna go all the way around and you can just make a little pleat at the top. And that kind of gives a tiny bit of a nod towards Alice's puff sleeves. So, here's the deal. It kind, like, it looks pretty nice. Um, but right here, it's, like, really pulling. Like, moving my arms back is kind of impossible. So, um, that's not great. It's a little bit too tight. It's just kind of the whole around the arm area is not fabulous. Without like making it morph tons, I can only move my arm up to there. This is not too bad, so here's the plan. I am going to cut a shape something like this. I'm gonna modify it a little more and cut a slit right there and put this in there. And I think that that will actually kind of look like a really cool detail and it will also help the fit be better. So I'm liking where the waist hits on this, the darts are really nice. Um, I have this problem with a lot of dresses that I've made. I always make the waist too big. So I wanted to get a little better at that this time and the waist seems like Perfect. There's like just enough slack. So I'm happy about this. I just need to fix this situation. So here we are. I think that this is way better. I feel more mobile. It's still a little tight like right here. I have that same problem in another dress I've made. So I need to get better at that. But when I'm just like standing, I think I like it. Then I started sewing together the skirt, and because it's a circle skirt, the best way to explain it is basically like a pizza. Each piece is like a pizza slice, and you're sewing it together to make the entire circle, but there's a hole in the middle for your waist to go, if that makes any sense. Of course, I left one of the seams open so that I could wrap the skirt around myself and actually get into the waist. Once that was done, I sewed the skirt onto the bodice of the rest of the dress. Here is the situation. There is somebody staying over at our house right now and they are staying in the rec room where my sewing station is and 
my sewing machine is very, very loud. It's 114 years old, what can you expect? So this means that I currently can't really be using my sewing machine unless I found another place to use it, and I don't really know, I don't really have a great place that I can use it. So my plan is to right now just do the parts on the dress that ought to be done with hand sewing, and I can just do it chilling on here, watching some YouTube on my phone. I am going to start with the sleeves, hemming the sleeves, and then I'll start working on the collar situation. So I actually did the hemming of the sleeves the opposite of what you would usually do. So I had the uglier side on the outside so that I could then cuff the sleeves and tack them in place and you would have the cleaner side on the outside. Hello! It is another day, and um, I'm wearing an elvish look today. If you don't know, I freaking love Lord of the Rings, so here is the look today. So, um, the dress. It's definitely coming together, so I think I'm going to start with adding the little collary thingies. And yeah, we'll just start with that, and then I'll probably end up working on the buttons in the back. Excuse how incredibly asymmetrical these eyelets are. Hi, it is way later in the day, and I have done a couple things on the dress. I sewed the collar on, I have yet to iron it. Um, and then I did some felling on the inside of the bodice, and then tomorrow I will do the hemming and the felling on the inside, but right now I am going to start working on sewing the buttons onto the back. I have selected some buttons here. I have these peach and coral buttons. There's these little ones that you totally can't see the color because of the lighting, but I have four of those and then I have three of these, but I'm going to alternate these and put them right down the back. So yeah, let's get sewing. So, it has actually been probably more than a week, and I've done a few things to the dress, and I've undone some things to the dress, so I'll talk about this, I'll give you some updates. So the dress is just about done. I added these bows to the outside of the sleeves, and I really like how those turned out. I think that they're adorable. I finished the whole closure, but one thing that I did was I started sort of cleaning up and felling the inside of the skirt with my sewing machine, but it was just like turning out really weird, so I took out all of those bits. It just like, weird things were happening, and if I wanted this like the inside of the skirt to be felt, I'd have to do it by hand. And I can always go back and do that later. It just takes a really, really long time to do by hand. I also hemmed the skirt. It's a little bit wonky because like I haven't been using a sewing machine for a really long time. So it'll take me a little while to get used to it again. So in a few parts, it's like kind of weird, but when it is actually on the body, I think it looks pretty good. I also did a little something to the apron. I just made it a little bit shorter because I like the apron a lot, but it was longer than the skirt. So I shortened that a little and yeah, the dress is pretty much finished. All I really have to do is some ironing and then I will show you the finished result. So that was a very long video. Um, it took me quite a few days to make this dress, 
so I kind of knew that it was gonna be really long, but I hope you liked it. I hope the length didn't deter you. I'm very happy with the results of the dress. Even though the skirt isn't finished on the inside, I don't really mind because it doesn't seem like a super frayable fabric to me, and I will probably be wearing this dress on just like a day-to-day -day basis because it's very much my style and a lot of my aesthetic is based around Alice in Wonderland. I'd like to mention real quick that I have this email where you can send me vintage and antique fashions. You can find them on Pinterest or Google Images and you can send them to me and I can react to them in a video. Try and find really weird things and they can be anywhere from the 19th century to the 20th century, anywhere in there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you next time. Bye! I am going to throw a rock into a bush and film it. There's so many wonderful places that I could film in public, except that it's in public. I don't know what I'm doing.